A lot of people don't realize that the American Revolution was several different revolutions all wrapped into one. That is, there were lots of groups who were fighting for liberty, freedom, independence, and not all of them were the people we think of today as the patriots or the American revolutionaries. Uh, if you take a look at Native American or Indian women, you get a very different perspective on the American Revolution. Uh, Native Americans, who obviously had been here much longer than Europeans, were not naive or innocent, uh, politically innocent people. Throughout the 17th and 18th century, Native Americans understood how to play one rival against another. That is, they knew how to side with the English against the Spanish or side with the French against the English, and in doing so, they knew how to protect their own communities and often get rewards for their loyalties, so to speak, to the side that uh, uh, they had aligned themselves with. It was much easier for Native Americans to feel um, warmly toward the French because in French Canada and the Ohio Valley, the French came largely to uh, hunt and to trade for pelts, beaver pelts. Uh, they were not really farmers. Much of Canada is not going to yield much in the way of staple crops. And so they came over as fur traders and trappers. And because of that, they weren't invading, in a sense, or trying to seize the land of the Native Americans. The English, on the other hand, were from the very beginning agriculturalists, farmers, and land was what they wanted. Uh, also, the English tended to be uh, fairly uh, narrow-minded about other cultures. Uh, they viewed the Indians, especially in the 17th century, they viewed the Indians as just inex an inexplicable group of people. Uh, American uh, colonists and English travelers would go into Native American communities and try to interpret what they saw going on. And from a modern, much more sophisticated point of view, you'll, you would find this hilarious. They could not comprehend uh, either the sexual mores of, and marriage behavior of Native Americans, and they couldn't understand where power was. Uh, in English culture, men farmed and women did domestic activities. That was almost the definition of your, your gender, was a man was a farmer, a woman was a housewife. But in Native American culture, on the whole, women were the farmers, the, ag <coughs> excuse me, the agricultural, agriculturalists, and men supplemented the diet of the tribe or the clan or the community by hunting, and they protected the community. So, Imagine the surprise of English travelers when they arrived in a community in the summer, for instance, when Native American men didn't hunt. There was no tracks that they could follow in the snow. or uh, So uh, they would see women toiling in the soil, planting food, and they would see men sit in their minds sitting around doing nothing. What the men were doing was mending nets if they fished or uh, preparing weapons or playing ball in order to keep in good physical shape. What the English saw was all these lazy, no good for nothing men and women who must have been, <coughs> must have been slaves. They couldn't comprehend that women would be the farmers. Even worse for them was they couldn't comprehend that many Native American tribes were matrilineal. That is, they traced uh, families through the mother, which in fact made a great deal of sense because you always knew who the mother was as she was present at birth. And they would, uh, Native Americans, instead of going to live in his home, would go to live in her family's log house or, or uh, a dwelling of some sort, which also amazed the English. They were scratching their heads over that. Far more important than that, since there was no private property to pass down in Native American culture, it didn't 
really matter who fathered the son, the first son, the second son. Legitimacy was not the kind of issue that it was in a, in a culture in which property passed from father to son. And so in some tribes, for instance, the men would go off hunting. The women were clearly self-sufficient. They were producing the food. Uh, if they decided they didn't like their husbands anymore, uh, when the men came home, they would find their possessions outside the log house. And that would be a symbol, you're divorced, that is, you're gone. Well, you can imagine what the English thought of this. Uh, they were, pages and pages and pages were written about the scandalous behavior of Native American women. Uh, so that you get an image of Native American culture that is totally through the eyes of English culture and completely misreading what was going on. They couldn't understand that women had power because in English culture, women had no formal power at all. And so while the men could decide to go to war, the women could decide not to give them any supplies to go to war with. And so the women could say, well, if you want to engage in this war, which we think is foolish, uh, we're not going to give you any food. You're going to have to go off on your own and good luck to you. Uh, and so though they didn't decide the war, they clearly had power to block the war or support the war if they wanted to. This was incomprehensible uh, to English patriarchal hierarchical society. So the, the relationships between the English and the Indians was always strained. There's always tension, there's always vi often violence, they are always um, viewed as enemies of one another. Or in modern parlance, the, the Indians were always the other in the point of view, from the point of view of, of the Englishmen, whereas the French were much more willing to learn the native language. They were much more willing to uh, marry Indian women. There was no sense uh, uh, that these people were savages. And so you can imagine that in any confrontation, Native Americans would be likely to side with the French.